is your favorite Indiana Jones movie? <laughs> you know, I feel sorry for Temple of Doom. So I, I, I think the dialogue in Temple of Doom is the best dialogue of all. I mean, when they're in the airplane and she goes, you, Mr. You do fly, you do, and he goes, uh, no, do you? <laughs> it's perfect. I mean, there's so many lines in that film. And uh, I think it's highly rewatchable. And not that I don't like the other two, but uh, I do. I love them all. But that one is sort of unfair. Now, wait, hold judge, on just I a think. second here. Now, this is Tony Baxter. Though you might not know his name, you certainly know his work. How about Big Thunder Mountain Railroad? Or The Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage? Journey into Imagination? Or how about the Indiana Jones Adventure Temple of the Forbidden Eye? Yeah, those were all his. Now, what makes it so cool is that Mr. Baxter just showed up. Just showed up at our panel. Because he's an indie fan. Well, when I heard they were doing this, I couldn't uh, not come by. Well, thank you. We do appreciate that. And, and I know we all appreciate the ride at Disneyland. And uh, I worked there for about uh, almost a year. And it's quite an intense ride you've created. I can say that much. What's your favorite part of the ride? When you were, when you were designing, you went, that's impossible. And then you figured it out. What, what, was, what was that like? Oh, it was just at the dawn of interactivity, and it's not really interactive, but it's unpredictable. It gives you a choice of which, you know, wish we're going to grant each time you ride it. And I had to fight like crazy because studio thought, oh, no one, no one, you know, picks those things out. But it, when it hit the very early internet in those days, it was like, I've been on it, and I've gone on doors number one and doors number two, but I've never been in door number three. Has anyone out there been in three? And this guy says three and two, and I've never been in one. And it got to be quite a thing. Flies me out. Yeah. You have to ride that. That's empty. It started out, I think, the original concept for an indie ride was it was just the obvious thing was Temple of Doom. Everyone saw the minecar sequence in that. Um, and I think that's what kind of got Disney interested in talking to Lucas and Spielberg. And he really wanted the mine car. He was talking to yeah. us about having guests being able to operate the brakes. And, yeah. you know, I mean, it wasn't really a functional brake, yeah. obviously, but yeah. it was some interactive element. Yeah. We had developed spark effects and all kinds of yeah. beautiful yeah. things on it. So we incorporated the mine car and the, and the Jeep right mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. into a, a concept, um, and in addition to a, a, a labyrinth. Right. And we had a huge It was project. a whole land. It was a whole land. It was a whole land. Yeah. Yeah. Real early in the concept, there was a, a point where when the mine car was still in the ride and, and the Jeep was the part of the ride as well, you were going to go through this labyrinth where at some point you were going to have to make a choice of one or the other. But one of the things we were going to do with it was we were going to set up this labyrinth thing where it was constantly going to be changing so that if you went through it one time and came back the next time expecting to get through the labyrinth the same way, it was going to be different. Walls would move, walls would change. And there was we were laughing for weeks because at one point you were going to go out and exit and you were going to be back at the beginning of the ride, or at the beginning of the queue. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. you could have walked through an hour and yeah. just been dumped back at the beginning yeah. and you, there was nothing you could do about it. Nothing you would start all yeah. over again. And, and we had said that you had chosen wisely by doing that. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't the escape route. <laughs> Honestly, one of my favorite ones, I mean, again, the mine car, but it was a fabulous effect, uh, just a foam core mine car. The first one was foam core because we destroyed it, just yeah. the first time we fired it. <laughs> it had such velocity to it. Yeah, great. I remember Greg Cook doing that. Yeah, then we rebuilt it because the, the, the simulation was that the vehicle hits this mine car coming at you. After you've been in the attraction, we were assuming we were building the mine car at the time, you're in the attraction, you are seeing all these mine cars over your head. You're driving through the, the volcanic chasm, and there's just an incredible amount of kinetics and energy in there. And then all of a sudden, you go into a dark tunnel, and here comes a mine car at you, and it hits you. And it was actually a show action equipment. And it really was one of the best effects on the Jeep ride because the Jeep stalled out as, as it was programmed that it, from the collision that it you know stopped. And it was like, rum, 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 trying to get it started again, and finally it took off. Can you do that again? <laughs> and I swear that there's, I think we all know it after riding the ride, that after you've gone through the cavern and you come into the corner where it's dark and the Jeep stops, it's the same exact profile in the program where you hit the mine car. Hmm. And then you start up the Jeep, drive on farther, and there's the rats running across the branch. And it was a great way, one of the, one of the big ideas of Indiana Jones is we wanted to build the reality of uh, 
what do you call them? Uh, break stops or, or uh, uh, zone, zone, break zone, zone, zone zonal break intrusion? Block zones. Block block zones, zones thank you. Yeah. Where if there's a car ahead of you, you're not just sitting there waiting to move into the next right. scene. There's actually a show moment, and and the, and the mine car collision was one of those. Yeah. So that that's all about the safety issue that you have to have enough braking distance um, between yourself and the car ahead of you, and if for some reason you don't have enough, then the trailing car has to basically vamp until there's enough clearance. We're still talking about a ride that we worked on, I, I started 18, 17 years ago, yeah. and it's still in the park. Yeah. And I mean, it's not like, you know, a thousand people reading a comic book, it's millions and millions of people have ridden this ride that we all killed ourselves on. Yeah. And I mean, we killed ourselves on this sometimes. There was a lot of 24 hour all-nighters before big presentations, you know, for, for George or for Michael or, you know. Well, it seems ridiculous that it was even a question that, that there would be any doubt that there would be an Indiana Jones ride, but really there were large moments where there was doubt about whether there would be an Indiana yeah. Jones oh, yeah. ride. And the fact that there's not one in Florida, yeah. I think, is proof of that. You know, I don't, you know, yeah. it, it's, it's all about the stunt show there. I used to love seeing all the indie fans, honest to God. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, and they would be their weeks before well actually the the opening queue of the ride opened six months before the ride did and you were allowed to walk around through the world the mm -hmm. environment there with the truck and, all, and that was that was a nice thing to do because oh, that's know, right yeah they were yeah. out back yeah. in the box yeah. finishing the ride but it yeah. really built up the anticipation and <laughs> well you know that was the other thing the uh, the scene that uh, uh, was it, did Tim Kirk do a great movie right yeah yeah, yeah the, the, Raider scene. I mean, yeah. it was like that. A lot, yeah. That, that it'll live up to that with the beautiful skeletons scene. and the snakes. And yeah. all that. that was great. But. And it's a good sculpt of Harrison Ford too. His yeah, face. it looked great. Well, I, I was one of the concept designers uh, overall on the park, uh, Hollywood Boulevard, uh, Muppet Studios. Uh, one of my focuses was our big E attraction that anchored the park, called the Great Movie Ride, which was a traditional Disney ride through audio animatronic attraction. Uh, I worked on the ride overall and I was also directly involved with art direction and production design on the Indiana Jones scene, the mummy and tomb scene that, that follows that, uh, the alien scene uh, from the 20th Century Fox movie. And I did plant a lot of flowers in the Oz scene in Munchkinland. We duplicated the Well of Souls scene as closely as we could to the movie, but as most dedicated Indiana Jones fans probably know by now, if you're riding through that scene and you look to the left, uh, opposite the scene with uh, Indy and Sala lifting the Ark out of the, uh, the crypt, there are hieroglyphs all over the walls, and we put a hidden Mickey hieroglyph. Uh, up there. It's, Mickey Mouse is a pharaoh and Donald Duck is offering him some kind of an offering. So if, you're, if you've gone through the ride for the 90th time and are tired of looking to the right, you look to the left in the dim light and you'll see uh, the Disney characters. We always put hidden Mickeys in everywhere uh, in these theme parks. So we, were, we were loaned uh, some vehicles from the third movie, uh, Last Crusade. So we had the tank, a couple of trucks, and a touring car. Uh, so I designed a prop set up next to the, uh, actually between the exit to the stunt show and the merchandise shop. It's just something to look at. That's a real tank. You know how I can tell? Remember in the last crusade where Andy put that rock in the tank so they weren't shooting? Look, look. It's my favorite memory of working on the Indy attractions is probably pretty much what my favorite memory is of any any of the theme parks that I've worked on. It's seeing a little sketch that I do, uh, and it might be a, a napkin sketch in a restaurant uh, or, or just very rough drawings, to see the evolution of that into an environment, into an immersive environment that you can walk through. And what's even more wonderful to me is to be at one of these theme parks on opening day and to see people's reaction, uh, delighted reaction to, uh, to something that I've had a part in, in creating. 
to be given the opportunity to work at a place like Walt Disney Imagineering where uh, someone like me can, can see what basically they've done on flat pieces of paper turn into real built places is, it's hard to describe the feeling. Uh, it's just very hard. Uh, it's, it, it's been a wonderful, wonderful ride. If you'll pardon the expression. I'm lying for the movie and I never thought I would have the chance to actually have anything to do with it with, with Disney. I did, it was just an amazing dream come true for me and probably for you too, mm -hmm. Tony. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember the day that we snuck over to Pasadena, which was doing a sneak preview of this thing called Raiders of the Lost Ark, which didn't make any sense if you think about it. What is a Raider of a Lost Ark? And uh, we had to sit through Excalibur, and there were popcorn boxes flying through the theater with everybody totally bored, waiting for this movie to come on. And after it was over, I was where it was Skip Lang, who also worked on the indie ride at Disneyland, and we sat there, and this was again, 1981. That was, it, for me, it was still, probably to this time, the best experience. Uh, and what was neat about what we just saw is to get a, get a chance to go back to that and kind of, it was, it was a chance to go back to that time and also the excitement of thinking in only about 24 days, we're going to get to it again. So um, I'll be there in line, either down here at the Newport or at the Arclight or somebody on that midnight. Uh, midnight run on, on Wednesday night, I guess. So, anyway, thank you for letting us have this. this